I am changing the brake fluid and the clutch fluid in my motorcycle. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm going to explain in this video what is brake fluid, what does it do, what are the differences between different kinds of brake fluid, why do we change it? Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so I like to keep, you know, a big hypodermic needle, it's not a needle, but just one of these syringes, right, um, makes it really easy to get the reservoir empty without making a mess. First thing I'll tell you about brake fluid is it's very corrosive to painted surfaces, like this stuff breaks down paint, so you can see I surrounded things uh, in case of a spill. I've been doing this for so many decades and yet I still spill a drop here or there once in a while. It just, it happens, right? And uh, so I try to do everything I can to protect the cosmetics, the things that I like to look at that are bright and shiny, pretty objects, right? Um, so get a syringe and, or, you know, if there's some, God forbid you've got a medical reason why you need one of these things in the house, keep it afterward. As I continue doing this job, um, I want to point out how do you do the job of changing brake and clutch fluids. Um, already have a video on that and so you can view that here and uh, that goes through step by step how I do brake and clutch fluids. Um, I have a journal that I keep that way I know when the last time I did these jobs is and it gives me some rough idea of uh, when it's time to do it again. I you know, keep track of oil changes, tire changes, chain and sprocket changes, clutch fluid changes. Um, just about anything I do maintenance-wise on my bike, I just journal it. It's, a, it's just a simple notebook. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but uh, I write down what I do and when I do it um, because it really helps when you own a machine for a long period of time. and. Hey, I've got 87,000 miles on this bike now, uh, 85,000 of which I personally have put on it. This thing has treated me so well. I have videos of my review of the V-Strom if you're interested, um, in part because I take care of it and it's easier to take care of it if I have that actionable knowledge that comes from recorded data, right? Um, data is, data are power. Data are always plural. Um, hey, also want to point out, if you like motorcycles, uh, check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton. It is a story of building my cafe racer. You can find it on urbanmonktv.com or on Amazon. So, brake fluid. Before we talk about brake fluid, what are Brakes. What do brakes do? Well, brakes are a machine. They're a mechanical device that uh, many people think uh, grab a moving part of the wheel and with friction stop it from turning. That's not inaccurate, but it's not exactly the way I would describe what brakes do. And what brakes do is they are a mechanism to convert kinetic energy into heat energy. So that's what they do. And the key thing there is heat. So when talking about this, we can do just a quick little history of brake designs. Uh, brakes used to be operated with cables, right, that would pull uh, a mechanism to either 
contract around a rotating drum or expand inside of a rotating drum. I can quickly show you know the two different uh, systems here. The rear brakes on this scooter that I own, uh, it's my daughter's scooter, uh, it shows a good example of a drum rotating within a band that when the cable pulls it constricts the band around the drum and then uh, creates that rotating motion, that kinetic energy, and converts it into heat. Conversely, on my Cafe Racer, here's another similar design, but this one, the brakes are within the rotating drum, and as you press the cable, they are expanded uh, within and do the same thing, kinetic energy into heat. So somewhere along the line, some very brilliant engineer said, well, wait a minute, what if you had a rotating disc in between some brake pads that rather than expanding or contracting around a drum, uh, couldn't we increase surface area and get better leverage by having a larger disc and uh, thus the brakes would be more effective? and so let's come up with the disc brake system but there's a key difference in the mechanics of how this works in drum brakes when you have a round object that's expanding or contracting around or within a drum the geometry of that uh, is such that it when the cable pulls it you know it has to pull on one side and there'll be a fulcrum uh, on the other side and they, they, it wears unevenly. It, it presses slightly unevenly against the drum. Disc brakes solve that problem in that they just wear evenly, they press evenly against the rotating disc in between them the same all the way through the life of the pads and that's the big difference between the geometry of drum brakes versus a, a disc brake system. But in order to have that even press, how would you do that with a cable? And Some people did design systems like that. There were uh, systems engineered that used a cable to press discs, but they were really unreliable and uh, it just didn't work very well. So some smart engineer said, well, wait a minute, the way to press evenly would be to have a fluid do the pressing rather than pulling with a cable. And so then we come to the fluid. Maybe these make more sense in the other direction. Um, these two brake fluids before you, forget brand, doesn't matter. The difference is they're dot three and dot four. Uh, oh, there you go. Um, what they both are is glycol based fluids and the other option which I don't have a bottle of so forgive me is dot five. Dot five is silicone based. Uh, I'll get into why the difference is there in a second but the only thing I will say right here is these two systems uh, you know fluid systems are acceptable in and work and function in ABS brake systems or in standard brake systems. The key thing with DOT5 is it will not work in an ABS brake system. So the thing to know about glycol based brake fluids DOT3 and DOT4 are that they are hydroscopic which means they absorb moisture or water at, over time and the difference between 3 and 4 is 4 is more resistant to um, this water absorption. So, okay, so you put some water in it. Why does that even matter? What's, what's the deal with absorbing water? Why do we care? If you think about a machine that takes kinetic energy and creates heat energy, that's one area where it matters. Um, because what happens when you heat water? Well, liquid water turns into water vapor. Uh, vapor is not liquid anymore, it's a gas. So let's talk about what brakes are doing. So disc brakes are a hydraulic system 
And what do we know from hydraulic systems, right? You use a fluid to compress with very high pressure and thus you're be, uh, able to create uh, really strong machinery, right? Like strong forces uh, that can do some pretty amazing things uh, when combined with mechanical leverage also. Um, but the, the key is that fluids don't compress, so when you try to compress them, you really deliver all of that energy, all of that force to whatever work it is you're trying to do. In our case, we're trying to do the work of putting these uh, pads together around a rotor and turn the kinetic energy or the forward motion of our bike into heat and slow us down in the process. Um, so hydraulic systems require that you can, com you can push fluid without compression. Gases, on the other hand, can be compressed. We can take a large amount of a gas and put it into a small space because we can compress them. Um, in a braking system, we don't want that compression to occur. Why not? Well, because if we're compressing, then we're not transferring that force, that energy, into the pads uh, and we get spongy or soft brakes. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, soft brakes means not turning kinetic energy into heat equals not slowing the bike down as quickly. The other reason you don't want it in there is, of course, water is H2O. So it's got oxygen in it. And oxygen is a pretty uh, corrosive little element. It likes to bond with other things. And uh, aluminum like aluminum oxide, that likes to form too inside of your system. And so you've got all these aluminum parts and you introduce water in there and you can start to get corrosion. Uh, water turning from H2O to aluminum oxide, what is the formula or the compound? I gotta look that up. I'll post it here when I figure it out. Aluminum oxide well, that's corrosion, and the parts will slowly over time wear, and uh, of course that's a failure in your braking system waiting to happen also. So those are the two reasons we don't want water building up inside of brake fluids. Now in a clutch, less critical, right? Um, clutch systems don't create as much heat as braking systems. All I'll say here is, do I change my clutch fluid as often or with as high a level of concern as I do brake fluid? I don't. That's a personal choice for me. Um, I know what my manufacturer, in this case Suzuki, recommends for a change interval on clutch fluid. I'd be lying if I said I stuck to it. Uh, I kind of tend to stretch that one a little bit, but that's just, again, a personal choice for me because I've gone through this logic of, hey, you know, this brake fluid is built to handle uh, a certain level of heat and I just don't have that same level of heat. But that doesn't address the corrosion side of the equation. If I got water in my clutch system, again aluminum parts and other parts, you know, you can do iron oxide too, right? Rust. So um, we don't want corrosion. We do need to change this stuff at regular intervals. Uh, but a little bit less concern on my part for the clutch system because the heat thing is just removed from the equation uh, in large part. So, the fluid itself. Um, look at your manufacturer's recommendation for what belongs in your bike. Mine actually says dot four right on the cover. Um, but, so that's easy. Not all bikes will. It might be in the owner's manual. Uh, you can look it up online. But use what's recommended for uh, your machine. And the other piece here, of course, is now here's brake fluid in a bottle and there's brake fluid in a brake system. Uh, either way, they're both kind of in storage, right? Um, you'll find a lot of people recommending that once you've opened a bottle and broken the seal on a bottle of brake fluid, that you should use what you need for your job and throw it away. Here's the reason why, because this too is sitting in the atmosphere, which is full of water, uh, you know, humidity, right? 
and it over time will get into this fluid and then sitting on your shelf you put it into your bike and you just introduced a bunch of water into your system um, for that reason I won't store brake fluid for years and years and years like I might uh, transmission fluid or uh, some other kind of fluid like that but I don't necessarily follow that rule personally what I do is I get the brake fluid I need I pour it fast and I seal the bottle really well I've only introduced a small amount of water vapor in that amount of time and uh, you know to me I'm minimizing that the other factor there is where I live I live in a region of, of my country or a region of the world where uh, humidity is tends to be kind of low it's a it's a pretty dry climate here so if you live in a very humid environment uh, you may want to make a different calculation about how long you will store a bottle that has already been opened. Um, that's, that's a call we all have to make for ourselves. The easy thing, of course, for like the companies and their uh, legal teams to say is just throw it away and get a new one, right? Of course, that drives more sales. Um, some of that is driving more sales. Some of that is really sound logic, so be careful with you know how you approach that. Um, enough said. And so really that's pretty much all I wanted to share in this video about brake systems, brake fluids, and why you change them, uh, and, and the differences between the different fluids. Uh, the other thing I will just add is I'm going to complete this job. Uh, I'm not just pulling the fluid out of the reservoir and changing that, right? You got to change it all the way through the system. So again, I will point you to the video uh, that I uh, highlighted earlier here. I will also put it down in the description of how to change this clutch fluid and brake fluid um, and uh, get the entire system flushed with clean, fresh brake fluid. And again, if you like motorcycles and you like to read, uh, check out Creating Mr. Corton, available on Urban Monk TV in paperback or Amazon.com, or it is available as an ebook on Kindle also. Uh, if you are an Amazon Prime member, you can read it for free on your Kindle device with Kim Kindle Unlimited. And um, if you like this video, please uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you would like to become an Urban Monk. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.